My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. So I recently made a video speaking about my transition from community pharmacy to hospital pharmacy and someone asked a great question on the video. In fact, the question was so important that I thought it deserves a video on its own. So today we're going to answer that question and it comes from someone who is in a similar situation to how I was before when I moved into hospital pharmacy. So let me read out the question. Hi there, this is a great video. I'm actually on the same boat as you are before. I'm a trainee pharmacist in community, but will be transitioning to a hospital when I qualify as a pharmacist. How did you overcome the feeling of not being qualified enough at the start when working in a hospital when you've completed your pre-registration year in community pharmacy? So this is a brilliant question because it's such a daunting switch moving from community pharmacy to hospital pharmacy. Generally, you have this perception that pharmacists that work within the hospital pharmacy environment have such a greater skill set when it comes to clinical experience and that's something that you really struggle with with that transition and I'm admitting that that transition is a big transition. One thing that I have to be honest about is the fact that I found from my experience that the queries that you receive on a ward from other healthcare professionals I found to be much more difficult than the queries I was receiving in community pharmacy. That's not to say you do not have the skill set to answer these questions. It just feels like the questions that you're receiving, for example, what to do when vancomycin levels are too high or the patient's kidney function has deteriorated, what should we do with their medications for X, Y and Z. Those sorts of questions that you receive on a day-to-day -day basis on the wards can feel quite daunting when you move from community pharmacy to hospital pharmacy. So here are a few tips to help you with this entire process. The first thing I want to say is that you have a strong knowledge base and that's the main and most important thing. You've studied four years as an undergraduate student just as everyone else prior to your pre-registration year. And that's important because you have the base knowledge to be answering those questions. You have at least gone through the majority of the things that you'll see at least once in your undergraduate studies. The thing that you're finding difficult is putting what you've learned at university into practice. So that's keeping that mindset there. So it's all about fine tuning the knowledge that you already have. The second point that I want to say is everybody has to start somewhere. For those that did their foundation training year in a hospital pharmacy setting, started at the same knowledge base you have right now. That means that they've had a year to familiarize themselves with the processes that are taking place within a hospital pharmacy environment. That means that they do have a head start and you have to embrace the fact that you're not on that level yet but you can be, and you have the time and the training to be at that level. The most important thing is not to be comparing yourselves with someone that has done their training year in a hospital pharmacy setting, because your knowledge base is not going to be the same with regards to the way you handle queries, the way you speak to different healthcare professionals, and you have to embrace that. You also have to embrace the fact that you have to work harder if you want to be at that same knowledge base. If you want to have a similar understanding of how to handle those queries, you will have to work harder. You will have to spend more time familiarizing yourself with processes if you want to really kickstart your progress. And you can decide to do this or you could decide to take it at a slow pace. That's completely up to you. However, if you want to get to grasp with things at the same level of someone that's had one year worth of experience within that setting, then I would suggest spending more time familiarizing yourself with processes that are taking place within that environment. If there's any things that you find difficult on a particular day, note those things down, read up on those particular topics and try to approach similar situations in a better way, in a more evidence-based manner when you face them again. So if there's a particular question that you struggle to answer, go home, look the answer up, and make sure that you're prepared to answer that question accurately if you're ever to be faced with it again. Another thing that's particularly important is asking questions with colleagues that you have around you. Start to ask questions 
about processes. The most important thing is to have an understanding that you are completely new to that setting. So you cannot have the mindset that you should already know this with regards to any questions that you have about how you should handle a particular situation. Ask questions early on. Get over that feeling of embarrassment just so that you are better equipped for scenarios that you'll see in a hospital setting. And by asking questions to different healthcare professionals, different pharmacists, in different environments, you will have a better understanding of how different specialities work, how different pharmacists work, and how to approach situations as you would independently. Another thing that I would highlight is if you're going to shadow a pharmacist within a hospital, let's say you're moving from one speciality to another with regards to spending time uh, with a pharmacist in general medicine, spending time with a pharmacist in respiratory medicine, have an understanding of processes within that speciality, read up on guidelines beforehand, have some questions prepared beforehand. So that way you better utilize your time when shadowing a particular speciality. So if you're going to spend some time with a pharmacist that specializes in, for example, antimicrobials, you can ask that pharmacist beforehand, is there anything you want me to be familiar with? Is there anything you want me to read up on? Or you can prepare those questions beforehand, things that you struggle with with that particular topic, how to handle situations, questions that you may have received so far that you didn't know how to answer. Keep those questions prepared in a notebook, ask those questions, note down the answers so that you have answers for particular questions that you found difficult. That way you're constantly learning new things, utilizing the opportunities that you have spending time with pharmacists in different specialities and areas. And the final point is, if you ever feel like you're in an environment where you're working independently, but you don't have the knowledge base to do so, that you feel like there's a lack of support, then you have to highlight this. You are responsible for your registration as a healthcare professional. You are responsible for looking after yourself in these situations, looking after your registration. So it's very important that if you feel like there is a lack of training, if you feel like there's a lack of support, you have to highlight that to your senior colleagues. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, and check out my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one.